Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show brought to you each week by the National Sports Collectors Convention. Join us every Wednesday evening at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time and get the latest news from the greatest experts in the sports collectibles world. You can watch us on the Great American Collectibles Facebook page as well as YouTube or you can listen to us on Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio or any of your favorite podcast platforms. And now your host, award-winning sports collectibles author Tom Zappala and Red Sox Hall of Famer Rico Petroselli. <laughs> award-winning. What? what? Wait a second. Don't. You won an Oscar. Malor- what did you, Malori you win? Started, hey, hey, hold on. Malori, Malori started with me last week. All right. Malori started with me and Chrissy started but, with me. You know, that's, that's terrible. Wait, wait. See what he did? It's, See what no, he put it's, his hold award-winning. On. When, when she... When Award. she the introduction is usually Red Sox Hall of Famer, Rico Petroselli, and for Mallory, it's Boston sports personality, John Mallory, because he writes a little right. bit. So I figure, what the hell? Just throw, throw, the, throw award winning. And that's nice. It's, uh... Uh, welcome to the Great American Collectible Show. Anyway. Tom Zappala, my paisan, Red Sox Hall of Famer, Rico Petroselli. Uh, we've got a great show to today. Of course. Uh, we're going to bring... Charlie in right now, our good friend, Charlie Perino from JRI Cards. Charlie, nice hat. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? How's everybody doing out there? Good. Uh, Charlie's going to be with us for the whole hour. Great. And now we're going to bring in two of our other friends. Uh, Hold on one second. My phone is ringing. Award winning. Wow, this is first day, everybody. I know, really. Phone's ringing on this (laughs) side. Award winning. Award winning. You can't no, award winning from JP RS Sports and Rock Solid Promotions, our good friends uh, Brian Capola and Jimmy Ryan, also from the National Long Island Show. How are you guys? Hey guys, hey, how how are you? Long Island Show, man. All right, we have, uh, and then by the way, in uh, second hour, yeah. uh, the last ten minutes of the show, we're going to bring in Scotty Russell from oh, uh, uh, the Collector Co- Connection. Is he, oh, is he uh, award winning also? <laughs> you know, you know, we're going to strike that. I, I, I mean, I'm getting abused, man. I am getting abused on that. I love it. All now, right, listen. You know what? For all kidding, you do deserve an award. <laughs> I don't want to say what it you is. Know, you know, no, go ahead. I got to tell you something. Every time we come into the studio, guys, Rico is always bitching about how cold it is in here. How cold it is in here. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, now it's warmer. Yeah, but still, yeah, you yes. have a jacket. I mean, you're pathetic yeah. when it comes to cold. Yeah, I, anything under 70, it might as well be in the 20s for me. And I'm proving it <clears> right <throat> now. Freezing. If you, uh, I don't know if you guys can, they can't see that, right? Okay, there's a... You see that photo? Where? <laughs> I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the heater, yeah. We yeah we're, heavy there's heat. a photo up, and you guys will see it tomorrow night. There's a photo up circa 1973, 74. Rico is in the dugout with his Red Sox hat on and his jacket over a, what is it? Like an open fire pit. Charcoal. <laughs> Warming his hands. He's always cold. You're Always, pathetic. absolutely. Pathetic. Well, listen. My father used to wear in the, in, in July long underwear, a sweater, and a jacket. He was cold all the time. It translates, pal. Let me tell yeah. you. So anyway, all right. Let's get to Brian and Jimmy. Uh, first of all, congratulations! The twentieth anniversary of the show. Correct. Wow. Yes. Wow. Um, That's great. Um, we're going to kind of mix it up. Uh, we'll go to Jimmy first. Jimmy, a little history. Uh, of the show, if you can, uh, you know, I said 20th anniversary. You guys uh, really have established a, 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 a rock solid show there. How about a little history? Yeah, yeah. So the show started in uh, 2004. Um, it started October 2004. I was a dealer, set up at shows for years, and in 2003, one of the local show promoters said, "I'm going to retire." I go, what are we going to do with shows? How are we going to keep our shows going? He goes, why don't you get into the show promotion business? So I said, all right, what do I got to do? He goes, show up an hour earlier, stay an hour later, I'll teach you it's easy. Well, in 2004, we got this great idea. I had this great idea. Let's go over to the big hostage gymnasium, try to put together a big show. Walk in, big empty building, wife's with me. She says, what are you going to do? I said, fill it with dealers. Well, here we are 20 years later now, and it's been filled with dealers since then. So that first show, I mean, that was kind of a gamble, obviously, at Hofstra, at that gymnasium. How many deals did you guys have at the first show? We had 150 boots oh, and about really? 
40 single tables at the first show. Oh, wow. That's not bad. That's good. Yeah. No, it was, uh, you know, big empty building. Pretty scary. There was no, it wasn't even a website back then. It was nothing. It was paper and pencil to get it going 20 years ago. Now, Brian, how many do you guys have today? How many dealers and uh, how many tables? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, depending on the show, it's definitely 150 booths, 200 booths, depending on, uh, you know, what we're doing. East Coast might have uh, a few more. You know, you got in business, you got to uh, take risk. You know, you've been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's a, what's the word, faith? Uh, you yeah, know, you're going to have I mean? faith you, in, the, in the hobby, you gotta too. You got to say, yeah, in everything, say, let's do it. Let's go for it. And uh, not it doesn't work all the time, so... <clears throat> that's uh, that's kudos to you guys who you know who know what you're doing. Basically. Right, absolutely. And by the uh, way, Rico's dying to do a signing there at some point. You guys oh, have a hell. Will you stop it? <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, he's, he's my agent. This was how many years ago? Oh, Five years ago. That's this want me is to be bold. your agent? No, oh yeah, yeah. This yeah. is absolute. You bold. know what he got? This nothing. Nothing. Ah. Let's talk about the guest list, the signing guest list. Uh, uh, Jimmy, who do you, some of the some of the people that are going to be signing there? We have a H- Hall of Famer Joe Klecko coming. We have some Hockey Hall of Famers, Bernie Perrant, Pierre Turgeon, Baseball Hall of Famers, um, uh, George Foster coming. A bunch of other selected, you know, New York Jets um, coming there too. Vinny Testaverde, Wayne Corbett. About 30 players in all signing. We have all four sports um, coming also is w- uh, Walt Frazier, John Starks. Great. So we try to cover wow. all the sports, trying to get, trying to keep affordable autograph guests for the customers. We do a free autograph guest each day, which are admission. That's been a tradition of ours. We started that 20 years ago with giving away a free autograph with a paid admission, and we've kept that tradition going forward for 20 years. And also in Westchester, at our, at our other show in Westchester too, every wow. Saturday is a free autograph guest. Yeah. We are chatting with Brian and Jimmy so from the Long Island Show. Go ahead. You have, like, the, like other shows, which is happening more and more, we're seeing um, kids, families, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you guys must see, see that uh, happening also in your shows. Yeah, one of the things we've done is we give away a, a, a free pack of cards to every kid that comes in the door under 12. Admission, admission for kids under 12 is free. And yeah. inside that pack of cards is also a little winning ticket every five packs where you get a free autograph. So uh, we'll have nice. a selection change of autographs. Kids walk up to the autograph pavilion. It kind of introduces them into the show, into the autograph part of the show, too. It's a fun thing to do. You know, the best, Char- the best Char- part is looking at the, at the parents' faces when we do this with the kids. You know, Charlie, that's your business. I know. I mean, I, you know, I've been to your studio. I see what you do. I mean, you're you're geared for kids now. I mean, the stuff oh, yeah. the stuff that you guys do with the openings and the sound effects and all that stuff, man, that's really kid orientated. It all starts with the kids. You know, us as fathers had sons and, and and daughters that collected cards, and now the kids today will be the driving force of the future. And to keep them in there and involved, and keep and like they, these guys give free packs. Anybody knocks on our door, I walk out with like a big bag, like Halloween. And all the kids pick away at the free packs. That's and good. That's a good thing mm. to do. It's good to keep them interested. Absolutely. Brian, do you, uh, have you noticed, I mean, over the years, you've been in this business quite a while. Have you noticed over the last couple of years an influx in, in the younger demographic, in the kids coming up? Because we certainly have. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the blessing, uh, I guess, coming out of COVID was the resurgence in the business of new blood. And there's so much new blood created by you know, us being locked up in our houses, you know, for a year or two. And um, it just got everybody interested. And all these new businesses were built and, you know, just it's stirring, you know, the, you know, the, the, I will call it the economy of the baseball card business, but absolutely through and through shows and stores and everything that we could possibly see. At the national, remember the national in Cleveland? Kids in the lobby, they were oh, that was hundreds of them. Yeah, they we were. were yeah, and that was really good to see. That was great. We were we were sitting uh, uh, in in the lobby, having uh, they had a little restaurant in there at the Hilton, and the lobby was absolutely jammed with kids between the ages fourteen and maybe 25, 26, yeah. with briefcases, with briefcases. Yep. Working deals with each other, being you know really nice and uh, cordial to each other, trading, buying, selling. It was really, it was yeah, really, we're, we're, it was really impressive. Impre- I want to ask you guys, uh, Brian and uh, Jimmy, were you collectors as kids? Oh yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's, how I, that's you, how I got back in this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a great concept for either your show or the national. When I was a kid. Long time ago. Okay, boy, wow. You know, people, you guys call it cod flipping. That's we didn't, right. We, didn't call, we, we played a little different game. It was called scalers, where yeah. you would flip the card against a wall. We did that, too. Oh, they, okay. Well, okay. Well, we call this scalers. It's, okay. all, it's uh, all in the wrist, scaling, right? Yeah. All in yeah. the wrist. I'm telling you, somebody should have a scaler contest either at the National where kids – can you know have some prize money? Not prize money or prizes yeah, where cards. kids flip against. I'm yeah, telling you, no, it would that's be. That's not a it bad would, idea. It yeah. would be. It would be a great concept because yeah. we want to get the kids into what we did as kids. Listen, I had a 52 mantle as a kid. He was my idol, <laughs> right? Same thing up against the wall in the spokes. You know who knew? I, had I, said we, I said we do an adult version of that. Absolutely. No, that would be yeah, great. You know, I'm telling you right now. We'll supply you 50s and 60s cards. I would be the odds on favorite to win the whole thing. Because yeah. I, I used to kick ass in my neighborhood. So you want another reward, huh? <laughs> Award winning flipper. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had Ch- <gasps> with, Ch- with Charlie, oh, Brian, and, and Jimmy. Um, so the show is very family friend, uh, friendly. Uh, we know uh, when it comes to that. Your deal is, are they from all over the country or primarily from the East Coast? Majorities from the East Coast, but they do come from all over the country, too. I mean, like, we have a pretty good, solid base up here in the Northeast for dealers. So I would say 80% of it's going to be from the the, uh, local states, and then 20% come from throughout the country to the show. What about uh, third-party grading? Uh, Are they all on board, or some of them, or none of them? Did we lose that? Oh, oh, either Charlie, or, I mean, either uh, or Jimmy or Brian, yeah. third-party grading, uh, do you have a presence there? It all depends on which show it is. Um, certain certain uh, companies like Beckett does basically twice a year. PSA, they're slated to come back next year for us now. They don't do grading on site. They'll do more submissions than grading. Right, right. Charlie, yeah. tell us about the uh, 54 top sp- spectacle break. Ooh, it's getting closer. 54. Uh, third series, PSA 6, uh, 1,500 spots. Wow. And when all those spots sell out, we're going to uh, open up that pack live on our show. Uh, the solo packs back in 54 contain 15 cards. There were only three series. And oh. we're hoping for some of the great rookies in there. I was just looking at it earlier before the show. Like Hank Aaron's rookie card, Ernie Banks' rookie card, Ooh. Tommy Lasorda, which is great timing, too. Uh, huh. His rookie card, man. He looks so good. He, he's the guy missing that Dodger right. blue right now. Ted Williams was in there twice yeah, in, in the third series, in, in that series. He had a big fight with going on with Bowman. You guys remember the 59 yeah, sure. with Bobby Davis? Yeah. yeah. So the 54 Spectacle is a very unique pack, and we're going to, when it when it sells out, we're going to open it up live and hoping to pull some of those rookies, even Willie Mays, Ted Williams, K-Line's rookie card also. Jeez. It's a beautiful set. If you go to our website, we blew up some of the nice cards in there. Brian, do you guys do that? Do they have a uh, ripping, do you guys have card rippers uh, at the at the show? I mean, that's become huge, especially at the National. Yeah, we, we have a trade night um, going live this uh, uh, this weekend. I'm sorry, I just lost my mind on what day. Saturday. So. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of box breaks and and uh, and stuff like going on, but nothing nothing as as extravagant as that. I want a spot in that 54 tops. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, check our website. It's really some beautiful cards. The color and imagery back then in 54 without a computer, uh, they did a great job with those. Cards. Charlie, you got to get yourself a spot at the Long Island Show because it's right up the East Coast. And I tell you what, you'd be a home run there. You really would. Uh, I would love to go to Long Island. Yeah, that would be fun. I'm originally from New Jersey. I'm up up the uh, northeast up there. So, Um, Jimmy, has the hobby? What have you seen over the years with the change in the hobby? Well, I think, like Brian mentioned, like Brian touched on here, is the last four or five years the influx of the new generation. Uh, It's a great resurgence uh, back into the hobby. As we've all seen in the past, we all had the peaks and the valleys in the '80s and the '90s. People leaving, people getting back in, but the hobby's as strong as ever right now. There's so many people, so many new people in the hobby. You know, the, the other thing is, and I'm talking, to, you know, I'm directing this to both you, uh, Jimmy and Brian, is the thing that has been eye-opening to me personally over the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, is the influx of new technology um, to 
the hobby. I mean, you know, you walk into the national, using that as an example, you see what's not, what's app, you know what I mean? There, there are so many different uh, 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 companies that have kind of uh, been born that handle every aspect of technology in the hobby. What are your thoughts on that? It's great. You know, I mean, it, it, it just, again, it just binds us um, you know, as a community from all different angles, whether you're looking for market reports or exactly. you know, to upload your card personally or, you know, store a database or, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, sell them whatnot. I mean, we go on for LUDX and mascot. It's crazy. And- I mean, I, I, it's a good yeah. crazy. I mean, I remember, you know, being at, being at a, at a car show and walking around with an SMR magazine under my right. arm. Right, yep. that was the Bible. Everybody, everybody had one of those, and they, you know, open it up, look it up, see if it's a good deal or not. And it's just, uh, it's just changed dramatically. Can I ask all three of you want a question? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> May I, sir? Absolutely. Uh, no, seriously. <clears throat> would you, would you guys be okay or uh, with a, having an association? In other words, you know, like, what would you, I don't know what you would call it, the, the, uh, You're talking about a show association? No, sports or dealers. Co- uh, an association that would help you, you pay dues, like, that's a good question. Like these other things. And they have, what, one of the things they do is, is to, uh, research, you know, demographics and all that type of stuff for you, for all the dealers, all the, uh, you know, for all the shows and all that. Would you, or would you rather do things like that yourself? Independently. Yeah, independently. I mean, is there any kind of an organization that kind of unites everyone? Mm, there's, no, there's, not, there's, there's no organization now that does that. It's not that I can think of. You think it's a good idea? I mean, I guess some of us do that with, our, with other show promotion friends. Like, for example, the, the, the gentleman, uh, our partner in the National too, Joe Drellick, who runs the Philadelphia and Chantilly show. We talk all the time on, you know, what's going on in the hobby. We share ideas back and forth. Mm. We don't conflict on dates. So, and then he talks to his friends and we talk to other friends. So I guess it's kind of going on a little bit without, without yeah. it being organized, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, it makes sense. It's, common, it's just common respect back and forth between ourselves. You know, that's the, that's the one thing that, I, that I, yeah, another thing that I'm sorry that I've noticed over the years and really kind of embraced is that everybody seems to be friendly competitors. You know what I mean? Everybody kind of uh, works with each other. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's there's some you know uh, haggling now and then, but overall, uh, you know, especially even with the auction houses. I mean, like the uh, the Lelands and the Heritages, you know, I mean, they're all c- kind of uh, f- friendly competitors. I think that's a, that's a great thing. Brian, let's talk about your background. Can you give us a little, uh, a little bit on your background? Uh, I mean, prior to sports cards, I, I came from um, United Healthcare where we did uh, IT, we did LAN, LAN, desktop, you know, all sorts of uh, client to, uh, you know, client to computer uh, relationships and, but I've been in the hobby since, you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, you start out when you're a kid, when you're eight years old, and somewhere you get smart. And, you know, I went to go work for a store when I was 14 or 15. And then it just, you know, it cycled up from there. You know, buying and selling's in the blood. And, um, you know, it just it never feels like work. So, and then, you know, along the, along the years, I met Jimmy. And, you know, we, we first started um you know, brokering deals back and forth. He was, you know, mainly buying stuff that I was finding in people's houses. And uh, it, the relationship just evolved, evolved. And all of a sudden you wake up, it's 20 years later, and, you know, you've been in a show business together. And- you guys have done, you guys have done yeah. a remarkable job. You really have. I mean, you guys got a great reputation. Jimmy, what about your background? So same thing as Brian, you know, years ago, collected cards. 1985, I'm working in the IT field, just like Brian did, but we just worked more on like mainframes as opposed to the PC world. A friend of mine says to me, I'm going to a card show. I thought he said a car show, <laughs> like, a, like an automotive car show. No, a baseball card show. <laughs> he said, what is this baseball card show you speak of? Walked into a local 40-table show and said, oh, I like this. I'm hooked. Pulled my cards out of the closet when I was a kid, 
and got back into it, set up my first show in 1987. Wow. And like Brian said, we were doing deals back and forth for years and got into the show promotions business in 03. And all of a sudden it's 2024 and here we are. I'll tell you what, it is a great, it's a great hobby. Yeah. It really is. What? I, uh, you get hooked on it. Oh, it's great. Yeah. yeah I you mean, get yeah. hooked on it. Oh, when I, well, remember the first national? Oh, it was good. in Chicago. I went Rico in, had never been. Yeah, my first one. It, I says, I can't believe this. It, it was it was in Chicago. Yeah. And it was it was jaw dropping wow. for you. It wow. Was it was fabulous. Yeah, Guys, was- what do you have advice for uh, we have millions of collectors watching and listening? <laughs> Billions or millions? Well, we have thousands. I know. Okay. <laughs> For the collectors, what should they do? What? What? I mean, I know there's some that might be interested in 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 it, like as an investment. Let's say what well, some just want their favorite players and all that stuff. We got about a what minute left. Think? Yeah. Jimmy, you go first. I always say my slogan is always collect what you enjoy. Keep it simple. Collect what you enjoy. Hmm. Okay. Brian. Good honest business. It just it just takes it makes it things very easy. That's a good point, man. That's a good point. Good, yeah, good, yeah. Good. Charlie, uh, before what you what, what do you say? I'll say passion. Have a have a passion. Yes. I think what Brian and Jim said right along the line. Have a passion for what you collect. At any age, we're all old. We yeah. all know we're old, but it, it's reliving our youth and cards. You tell people about the baseball card or anything general card. It's been around since the late 1800s. Yeah, and people, yeah I tell I, people I'm in baseball cards. Oh, are they still around? I'm like, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Magazines, newspapers may disappear. The radio will disappear one day. Uh, but baseball cards, a piece of cardboard will be around for the next 50 years. Yeah, they yeah. try digital cards, but 1800s, a long time. This, this is a, an iron horse. I agree with the three of you. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I when we talk to kids, Rico and I, especially at the large shows, you know, I try to stress to some of these young guys, you know, there's nothing wrong with buying and selling and flipping cards, but at least try to develop a love for the hobby. Uh, try to, you know, if, if you're going to flip a, I don't, I don't care who the player is, a, a Eddie Brissoud or, or a uh, whatever, Try to learn something about the player, who he is, what he did, what his contribution was, and instead of just looking at the dollar value of the card, try to encompass the whole, the whole, the whole ball of wax. When does the show end, guys? E- either one of you can answer. The show end? Are they, are they both frozen? Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, so the show ends on uh, the this weekend, right? It ends this weekend. Uh, did we lose them? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're there. All right. When does the show end, Brian? Yeah, we can't hear him. Brian, can you hear us now? Jimmy, can you hear us? Now I hear you. Yeah. Okay. There was commercials running, I guess. Oh, okay. When does the show end, Jimmy? When is it? When is it started? When is it? Yeah, no. When does it end? It's it's it ends Sunday at um at four o'clock. Sunday at four, uh, the Long Island show. Uh, mm-hmm. Guys, make sure you're there. Uh, it's a great show. And Charlie, you got to get up there next year. You got to yes. make a point. All right, Brian. Nice talking to you, Jimmy. Nice yeah, talking great to you, guys. Uh, real quickly, Best. we have about a minute left. I know you guys are really involved with the National. It's going to be in Chicago this year. Everybody's looking forward to it. Um, anything you want to say about the National? I guess, no, we're looking for, I mean, I guess we're looking forward to, you know, bringing you guys the best National we can. We'll be coming out with updates, you know, in the future here on different things we're going to do. Tickets go on sale December 1st. And um, autograph lineup will start coming together. Tickets on sale December 1st. And we will... Do the best national we can for you guys again this year. Awesome. We had, we had a great time last year in Cleveland. This year, we're really looking forward to Chicago. With that being said, guys, uh, good luck with yeah. the rest of the show, and we'll see you down the road. Take care, guys. You. you got it, guys. Good Thank job. you. Bye-bye. Brian and Jimmy, uh, JPRS Sports and Rock Solid Promotions. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to have a Gax blast from the past. Hang in there. We'll be right back. 
Hi, I'm Rebecca Curry, a two-time child cancer survivor, recipient, and advocate for Lucy's Love Bus. The mission of Lucy's Love Bus 501c3 nonprofit is to provide joy, comfort, and quality of life for the entire family of children with cancer. Since 2006, they have delivered love and comfort to over 3,000 children with cancer and their family members across New England. The dream of Lucy Grogan, an 11-year-old cancer patient, was to help kids with cancer who are suffering right now, before there is a cure, by offering free, integrative therapies like art, music, horseback riding, and many other activities. Unfortunately, Lucy passed away, but her dream lives on, and today, Lucy's Love Bus is thriving. I'm Red Sox Hall of Famer Rico Petroselli. I hope that you'll consider supporting Lucy's Love Bus and all of those children who have been stricken by cancer. The Great American Collectibles Show is partnering with Lucy's Love Bus to help these kids. Let's continue Lucy's dream. Please go to lucyslovebus.org for more information. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions, here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become Another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Say that again? You didn't say much about your uh, Red Sox hat and the, uh, this Red Sox hat, what, not, Nin uh, 19, 19, 19, I don't know, 12, let's say. 1912, I think. Yeah, that's the old one in the Red Sox. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, I'm it, it, wearing it, it, this in solidarity Yeah, uh, for the Red Sox fans that are in mourning. That's uh, nice, yeah. For the fact that the Yankees are in the World Series. The last time they won the World Series, I think, what year was that hat or shirt? 
2018. 18, yeah. Which was a, a lot a, a fewer months ago, years ago than the Yankees, by the way. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Right. Um, before we get into our Gax Blast from the Past, uh, we mentioned Lucy's Love Bus. Uh, we are the official... Um, one of the official sponsors uh, for our fabulous program up here in Massachusetts, Lucy's Love Bus, uh, which is a 501c3 organization that helps kids with cancer, uh, does activities with them and stuff. Rico is the official uh, spokesman now. But if you'd like to make a contribution, uh, we're asking you, uh, just go to lucyslovebus.org. Lucy's Love Bus org for a contribution, a buck, ten bucks, whatever. Uh, we're going to be doing a major uh, auction with them in May when we get back from Florida. Right now, it's time for a Gax Blast from the Past, brought to us by our good friend Paul Borges and PB Collectibles, your neighborhood card shop. Go to pbcollectibles.com to find that special card or piece of memorabilia. Now, uh, before we bring this in, you just... Uh, uh, Went to Louis Tiant's funeral yeah, and yeah. wake. Yes, a couple of days ago. Yeah, in the Milton uh, Mass and uh, at a wake and then the burial. And uh, yeah, it was sad to see good friend pass away. But you know, in talking to family and all, he had he really had been sick for a while. I didn't realize that kidney problems, taking dialysis. And uh, but he didn't look good the last time we saw no, him. No, no, he had lost a lot of weight yeah, and all he that. Didn't look but good. Uh, just a great guy, great pitcher. Well, he should have been in the Hall of Fame. And a lot of us really feel that I way. I agree with you. We're so going to we'll uh, miss him. Just this week's blast from the past is uh, something that Rico did a couple of weeks ago. His thoughts on Louis Tian. Times. When I was at third, when Louis was, uh, you know, pitching a game, and if he was struggling a little bit, maybe had a couple of guys on, and the bullpen was going, and the manager would come out, okay. Daryl Johnson, who is a terrific guy, and he would come out, and Louis go, hey, what I'll do is try to do is, uh, <laughs> hey man, what, what do you want? <laughs> I, Louis said, Louis, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you out. He says. Mm-mm. <laughs> you know, take me out. If I lose the game, I lose myself, not from the bullpen. <laughs> and Daryl would go, okay. <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> walk away. <laughs> but he was tough. Yeah. Really great competitor. Everything. He is loved. When I tell you this guy has loved his teammates, Jim Rice and, all, uh, and the players in, in that, my era and theirs, Later on, just absolutely loved him. I know there's going to be a lot of sad people. Well, yeah, sad. I know. It, that's a, he'll, get, he'll get one hell of a send-off, I'll tell you. There were times when I was at third and Louis was... Uh... Okay, yeah, that was good. Um, <clears throat> i got to ask you a question. Did he really smoke cigars in the shower? Yeah, he smoked those long cigars. In the shower? Yeah, he would, he'd never get them wet. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. His head must have gone back. <laughs> But he was great. He was now. You fun. told me another story about him. Well, that he started a cigar company, and <laughs> and you were not a fan of the cigars. Well, I hadn't smoked a cigar in years, years. So he's at a golf tournament, charity golf tournament. He says, uh, "He called me Salami. <laughs> Salami, try one of my cigars, Louis. I, I haven't, you know, I haven't had a cigar in years. Oh, come on, man. Uh, let me know what you think." All right, so I smoked a cigar. Jeez, it was like, <laughs> oh, God. He didn't stay in business very long. Well, no, with that cigar, he changed, and then he, the second one was really good. But he asked me afterwards, what do you think? What do you think? I says, Louis, I never tasted horse manure. <laughs> but if, it, if I did, I think it would taste like this cigar. He says, you so so beaver, goddamn, don't tell nobody. <laughs> don't tell nobody. <laughs> Now, his cigar brand is no longer in existence. No, no. Because no. I know you're a big cigar a, smoker. As not I really. I'm a, I'm a small one. Yeah, so I like small yeah, so cigar. Um, all right, Charlie, now I want you to talk about, again, the 1954 top spect uh, spectacle break. And by the way, just a reminder that Scotty uh, Russell from the Collector Connection yes. is going to be joining us in a little while. Okay. Uh, Charlie, tell us about that. Yeah, real quick, though, back to El Tiante. It was funny last week. I know Pete Rose, the legend, passed away, but I made a mention on the show that we lost Louis Tion. He was a Red Sox and a Yankee, and I, I saw him on a Dean Martin roast years ago. Uh, he was a funny guy altogether and a right. great guy. He really and I was. Happened to, 
And we opened up a 78 and a 75, I think. And we pulled this card twice that night as if Louis was up there. And he, we are, and I'm looking at his card live out of a pack. I'm like, wow, what impeccable timing to yeah. have a pack where Louis came out of. That was pretty cool. And that's something. Um, yeah, wow. Great stuff. Uh, yeah. The 54 Spectre. Yeah, t- 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 walk us through it because it's pretty, it is a spectacle. It, it is a spectacle. The name fits it right. We have a 1954 PSA graded, unsearched, and sealed baseball pack. It's the third series from 54 uh, for the education. It contained 15 cards back then. Most sellers were 10 or 12. Some went to 18 in the mid-70s. But back in 54, they stuffed 15 cards in there. And it's a third series cello pack. And the three big rookies are Hank Aaron, uh, Willie Mays, and Tommy Lasorda, and Al Kaline. Four big rookies, I think, in that series. And Ted Williams is in, in that series, uh, in that set twice, the first and last card. They only made 250 cards. Mm-hmm. And we're selling 1,500 spots for $50. And every spot gets you a bonus break. So we'll have a box of something from the 90s, an early vintage box. We're opening up a lot of 2003 heritage boxes. So you get a free pack, which could may contain a nice hit as well. Uh, as we wait patiently for this spectacle to sell out. Charlie, you know, one, one more. T- can you run, run through one more time who are the heavy hitters in that? In the third series? Yeah. Uh, rookies are Hank Aaron, Ernie Banks, Al Kaline, Mr. Tiger, Tommy Lasorda, and there's also Mays, not his rookie card, yeah. and Ted, Ted Williams, not his rookie card in there. Uh, those are probably the big six. I think Rocky Colavito may be in there also. We couldn't put all the pictures up, but on our website, if you go to the spectacle and you look at it, we put the six cards up there that we're looking for, Good for in you. that pack. That That's, was uh, 54 Cleveland, I think, won 111 games. Yeah, they had a good team. And they played the Giants <laughs> the Giants in the World Series and lost. Right. I think right. oh, that wow. was a, Yeah, it was something. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We have 1,500 spots. Everybody gets a pack, a bonus break, uh, and a sealed factory box that we open up as we go along to remind everybody how many are left. We started with 1,500. It's moving faster than what we thought. We're down to 878. And as it gets lower, the more people will actually buy some spots in there. When it sells out, we'll open it live on the air. We're live six nights a week. We'll pick a night. Everyone will then be rooting for everybody to pull great cards. Then we'll express grade them. All 15 cards come back, and then we'll randomize all 1,500 spots, and the top 15 get a graded card. Charlie, and, um, wow. tell nice. us about the rewards program, because I, I think that kind of stays under the radar sometimes, but it's a pre- pretty good gig. It does. If you're a customer at JRI, it's definitely above the radar, because every time you make a purchase, you get reward points, and points add up. We have shows six nights a week. We do shows, and you can win points on the show. We have a wheel. Uh, we have jackpots, you know, a, lot, a lot of little incentives out there. And points add up, and you can use them at checkout to reduce your cost. For instance, if you have 5,000 points, you can get a free spectacle spot by redeeming those points. And uh, our customers love it. It helps bring the cost down, and it helps keep uh, the activity going for our site. We also have cards for charity, which yeah. is great. We're a big, big supporter. For six years we've been around, all six years helping the independents for veterans. Stacia McDonough lost her husband, who was a war vet. Mm. Uh, and we have a charity. We started with one pack, then we went to two, and then we gave it a whole designated section on our website. If you scroll across the top, it'll say charity. And we got shot packs, uh, old, old baseball cards. We got Star Trek. We got non-sport golf. Uh, Alan and Ginther up there, and a portion of that proceeds go to the homeless vets, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, and Coast Guard. She's up in Bedminster, New Jersey, and they hand deliver the goods, which is good. Uh, they have volunteers, so it's not a big U-Haul or a lot of red tape, and it's a great fun organization. And we have a lot of vets in the room. I did the show the other night. We had some disabled Army vets in there, home, saying this makes my whole night, and. It's always a pleasure to give back a little bit uh, to those vets that are out yeah. there. Charlie, when, uh, when Rico and I visited you uh, last year uh, at the studio, we, I, number one, I think we were both pretty impressed with the, oh, with the way the terrific. studio looked. But yeah. you, you were kind of busting at the seams, and you had mentioned that you were thinking about maybe expanding. Uh, have you, is, are you staying put for now? We're staying put for now. We are live six nights a week. The only night we're not live is Sunday, but we are thinking about expanding to the afternoon. Uh, we, I, I, I'm, I'm a nine to five guy, but there's a lot of people watching and buying spots in, in the afternoon. 
a couple times we went live in the afternoon, we've seen a lot more than we thought. If we start to go live, we may need some more studios. You know, we can't have all the guys working and a chatter right. in the background, but we may have to expand there. And we're looking, there's only seven days in a week, and we take our Sundays off. That's a, yeah. being an Italian guy, that's my son, that's my spaghetti yeah. and meatball lasagna relaxation day. <laughs> but we see it opening for the afternoon, as early as lunchtime uh, to two o'clock. I guess the stay at home workers, the people that work at night, they're out there and they can pop in and get a little excitement during their day. Well, tell us about your staff, because obviously you can't do it uh, every minute of every day. Oh, no, no, no. You know, this business is a rabbit hole. Uh, we have a lot of back-end support. Uh, both of my sons are in there working diligently all the time. Uh, we have a whole back-end. The website alone have that running and being coordinated as, as a whole team behind there. We have a big marketing team. We're all over Facebook and YouTube. Uh we have Dollar Girls on staff. We have sorters. Don't forget me opening the items and the other two hosts, which are Jelly and uh, Nick, that are out there. We have three show hosts now. Uh, that's the easy part. That's the fun part. It's the back end, sure. sorting, shipping. We have free two-day shipping. We don't wait a week or so. We open the cards. We send them out. We'll grade them for free if they're a big hit, which is a nice little uh, perk for our company. So you we pull a Rico Petroselli. Uh, we, we pulled you out of the 75. I remember pack. that. Yeah, you oh, yeah. that. That's, that's it, that's it you guys. We are chatting with Charlie Perino from JRI Cards. But right now, you yeah. know what time it is, Rick? Well, uh, it must be time for... On Deck with yeah. Rico. Oh, on Deck. You know he's from New York. We hey, still hey. love him. On Deck with Rico Patricelli. <laughs> it is time for our segment On Deck with Rico, brought to you each week by our good friend, Brian Dwyer and the great staff at REA Auctions. Don't forget to get your bid in by going to robertedwardauctions.com. That's Robert Edward Auctions for extraordinary results and extraordinary service. This is an easy question this week. Yeah. Very easy question. Okay. This Go was ahead. sent by it? Mr. Wayne Soares. Hmm, sounds familiar. Wayne Soares. I don't know who uh, he is. Yeah. When you guys played the Yankees, yes. did you have a favorite restaurant in New York City? Uh, you personally? Well, not quite. My real favorite was Mama Petroselli's. No, I'm talking about when uh, she no, moved out that. of there. What no, do you mean? No, Are you kidding when, me? When she was gone. When she was in, she was in Florida at that time. All right, all right. So, so when you went, when you, in the... In the Mickey st- Mantle's restaurant. For food? No. For food. <laughs> for, for, uh, we used to Booms. saw, saw a lot. No, was, the food, was the food any good? Of course it was good. It was excellent. Really? Yeah. So you guys used to chintz off of Mickey after no, a game. No, we didn't chintz off. We pay. He was there a lot. Did you guys pay? I'm talking about when Look he, me in the eye. he retired uh, early in my career. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, the, no, the food was great. Even uh, into the 70s then used to go. Yeah. Also, uh, the the boxer, what's his name? Uh, oh, uh, uh, I, uh, what's his name? J- uh, not Jake Lamont. Or, no. Uh, Jack Dempsey. Dempsey's. Dempsey had a great restaurant. Oh, a great food. And, of course, New York, you know, we had at that time, meal money was $18, right? (laughs) So one time I ordered Jack. Jack, Oh, nice. Look at that. Scott's holding up. uh, You can't see Scott right now, but he's holding up a picture from Jack Dempsey's restaurant. Isn't that something? Scott, make sure you show us that when you come I ordered a a, a cheeseburger one time for room service. Cheeseburger and uh, Coke, right? How much at that time? Now, uh, this is in the six. 11 bucks. $14, almost 15 bucks. We got 18 bucks meal money. That was it. That is funny. That <laughs> is funny. So, you never had. To, well, how about Mama Leone's? Did you ever go there? Uh, no, not, uh, not really, no. No. Um, but when my mother and father were still living in Brooklyn, I would go home, you know, and pasta, everybody would come over, and we had a great time. But then, then, yeah, when they moved, and I. I went to the hotel. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we come back. Scott Russell is going to be joining Charlie, Rico, and I, Scott, from the Collector Connection. He's got a, uh, by the way, you know, I got a bone to pick with him. He stiffed us last week. Who did? He stiffed Mallory and I. Oh. And we're going to chat about that. All right. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Are you a collector looking for that rare trading card or autograph ball or photo? If so, then PB Collectibles in Newport is the place for you. PB Collectibles has graded cards, raw cards, complete sets, and wax boxes of the stars of the future, today, and from the past. We also offer a large selection of both vintage and modern cards. 
So whether you're looking to add to your collection or sell it, visit us at PB Collectibles, 269 Spring Street in Newport, located across from St. Mary's Church. We are your neighborhood card shop and much more. Pristine Auction is a family tour. Cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you are a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on the tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport, Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, courting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned. The highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. Hey, I'm Mike Petroselli. 
If your company is looking for the best in marketing and promotional items, you'll hit a home run with Petroselli Marketing. With over 8,000 suppliers and 650,000 imprint ready items, we can get your company the visibility it needs to get your maximum exposure. Whether it be office promotions, wearables, automotive, sports items, and everything in between, Petroselli Marketing can do it all. Our design staff will even work with you from concept to delivery and customize your products. At Petroselli Marketing Group, we will get your brand in front of your audience. Contact us at info at PetroselliMKT.com or call us at 603-880-3202. That's Petroselli Marketing, where no dream is impossible. Yeah, go to Petroselli Marketing, PetroselliMKT.com. Check out the website. There's a 25th year anniversary this year. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are they giving out free stuff? Yes, yep. Uh, Do I get something? No, no. You uh, you cannot get uh, anything because you, you are uh, crazy or something. <laughs> I don't know. No, of course. We'll get you something. Yeah, you always say that. <laughs> <laughs> you never come through. <laughs> Listen, folks, celebrating the 20-year anniversary of the Long Island National October 2004 to October 2024, JP Sports and Rock Solid Promotions is pleased to present the Fall Classic Hofstra Sports Card Show, the Long Island Nationals. That's Saturday, October 26th and Sunday, October 27th. It's held, held at the... Um, Hofstra University, David S. Mack Sports Complex, 245 Hofstra Northern Boulevard, Hempstead, New York, 11549. Shop over 400 of your favorite hobby dealer tables on over 40,000 square feet of the sports collectibles paradise of vintage and modern-day sports cards and memorabilia. Major auction houses and third-party grading companies will be on site to assist you with your collecting and authentication needs. The Fall Classic is family-friendly, and all kids 12 and under get in for free. You must be accompanied by a parent or guardian. Autograph guests, listen to this, to include Joe Klecko, Tony Armas, Tony Perez, Andrew Jones, George Foster, Pierre Turgeon, Omar Vizquel, Devon White, Otis Nixon, and many more. Yeah, go to NewYorkShows.org. That's NewYorkShows.org for tickets and more information about the Fall Classic at the Hofstra Max Center on Long Island, New York. That's NewYorkShows.org. Great show. you got to yeah, go yeah. to it. Good guys. Those two guys are good oh, guys. Yeah. Very nice guys. All right. Scotty Russell, welcome from the Collector Connection. And Scotty uh, has uh, an auction closing this weekend, I believe, Scott. However, I have a bone to pick with you. A bone? Now, last week, he was supposed to be on the show. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I said to Chrissy, Chrissy, have we heard from Scott? She said, no. I said, geez, that's not like him. So during a commercial break, I called him, and this is what I got for an answer. <laughs> Hello? I said, Scott, it's Tom. <laughs> Tom who? I said, Scott, you're supposed to be in the air. Hey, everybody needs a break once he in a while. He was still in bed. Wow. That's, <laughs> listen, he's a hard worker, you know. <clears throat> so he nah, I'm only kidding. Scotty forgot. I know. We all forget, Scott. It's called dementia. Uh, <laughs> you how you doing, know. Scott? How's everything? I'm glad that Rico wasn't on that week. And oh, I so only that's that's, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right, Scotty, uh, I, I don't know. Do you guys know each other? Scott, have you ever met Charlie? Yeah, I'm from his auctions all the time. Hey, Charlie's a good customer. Oh. <laughs> uh, Scott, uh, you've got an auction closing. You've got some great stuff. The Cobb postcard. I kind of that's a cool piece. Tell us about ah, uh, see that? Look at that. Very cool piece. Tell us about that if you can. Um, actually, it was really neat. The uh, story behind it was at the Strongsville show in, in, in outside of Cleveland. A gentleman came up to my table and had pictures on his phones of a bunch of postcards. And he said, I'm trying to get $50 for these. God. And, and I told him, I said, you are so <laughs> glad you came to me. Because everybody else would have broken their wrists trying to get their wallet out. Um, they were left to him by his mother. His mother was an antique dealer and kind of a junk dealer, he said. And most of the stuff she left him was worthless. And he just assumed this was more of the same. But he thought since it was Cobb and it was old, it was $50 because... 
It's not really a card. It's a postcard. And a lot of times you see pictures on the phone, the deal doesn't actually materialize. But sure enough, he came back later that day, he had a whole box of postcards, um, including the Detroit 1907 team postcard, which Jesus. some people can wow. uh, And then a bunch of other baseball-themed postcards as well, uh, which are all in the auction. We have a really neat postcard selection in this auction. Um, and I guaranteed him you know, a, a couple bucks more than 50. <laughs> yeah, I would think. I would think. Wow, that's uh, I've never seen. I didn't realize they had postcards out. But there's one of you. <laughs> no, uh, which is always nice. Oh yeah, very nice, Charlie. Uh-huh. You, you don't get into that at all, right? Yours has to be pack openings. Or, I mean, why can't you sell a spot uh, on that for that carb card without having to open anything? Well, we do have giveaways. We have slab nights Monday and Friday where if you spend X amount of dollars, you get a free graded card. And I'm seeing postcards pop up a lot more. Uh, Tickets, postcards, magazines now. They're grading everything they can, uh, which is very good. But we give away a lot of that, a a lot of the items. Most of our people are on that treasure hunt. They're hunting for that card, reliving their past when they were a little kid, and they just want a card in the pack. But a lot of those items we give away. We are giving away a 54 Bowman pack football and our giveaway we just launched it uh, a couple days ago every hundred dollars you spent gets you an entry if you buy a couple spectacle spots you get an entry and first place is going to get a 1954 psa bowman football pack very nice and forty thousand points so uh, a lot of people are chasing that amongst the other chases uh scotty tell us about the t205 set oh i've got that one here also this is neat this is a a really well-known pre-war collector and uh, he decided it was time to part with it. But I love what he did with these. He kind of created gaskets to hold them in place in the nine pocket pages. Huh. So the set presents absolutely beautifully. Wow. Wow. Is that a complete set? It is, com- it is a complete base set minus George Suggs, who's one of the short prints. Now, by base set, I mean it's got every player, but it's missing some of the variations. Sure. It's, like, huh. it's got two of the four Hoblet souls. Um, it does have two of the really tough variations, though. It's got the Bobby Wallace no cap one line of 1910 yeah. stats and the Pat Moran stray line of type, which are both brutally difficult cards. Very cool. Now, That's so nice. what is the bidding at that right now, for instance? Uh, last I looked, it was at like 3,800. So it's you know got a long way to travel yet. <laughs> yeah, but you got some time. You got some time in that. You got a 33 Gaudi, right? Mm-hmm. And plus, you have a 41 play ball set, right? A complete 41 and a near complete 39. It's just missing the Ted Williams rookie, but it's got the DiMaggio. Wow. Mm, wow. Nice. This That's is a good, good auction. Good. How, many, how many lots in the auction? Uh, just shy of 600. It's actually a little bit of a smaller one for us. We're normally around seven, 800 on this one. What about That's non-sports? Nice. Any non-sports? Uh, uh, non-sports is our next auction up. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's not comic books. now I want to ask both you guys a question. I'm going to ask you this, Scott, first. Are you seeing an uptick in basketball at all? Uh, the, you know, it, it still peaked a couple of years ago, that crazy spring it had. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I've got actually a couple of good basketball cards in December. I'll better, better be able to answer you then when I see how they do. Charlie? Basketball, I still remain, think, remains red hot. Don't forget, the sets of basketball were only 132 in the 80s. Uh, you didn't get a set of five or 600. They didn't make a lot, 50, 48, 57, 61. Then you jumped to 69. And then top, nobody made cards after uh, after 81. So 82, 83. If I'm talking more of the vintage. Uh, yeah. Scott was maybe talking modern, but the vintage stuff, not a lot of supply. They didn't make a lot, and there was gaps of years where they didn't make them. And very collectible. Will, Lou. Yeah, we actually did a 57-set break in PSA 5 in yeah. September that we were happy with, and we have a 61-Fleer set break coming up in December. So. Scotty, we didn't see you. We didn't have the opportunity to, uh, to chase you down and see you at the National. We were actually out straight. Were you happy with the results of the National for yourself? Um, it, it was good, but it wasn't as good as some past nationals for us. We didn't take in quite the volume of stuff we normally do and didn't make quite the contacts we normally okay, do. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Was, we got a few minutes. I got the, uh, what about the moderns? Who's hot and who's not? Oh, well, who's hot? Would it, The obvious is Otani, right? And Judge? Yeah. 
Otani, Judge, Soto. Um, yes, Trout has definitely cooled off with his inability to come healthy, even though he's yeah. the first ballot gamer if he never plays another game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm really curious to see what he does. He's he's announced his willingness to move to a corner outfield spot, even DH. So if that brings his bat back, I think people may you yeah. know, kind of reach to him. So Chal- it might be a good time. Charlie, what are you seeing? We get about a minute. Boy, I, I remember at the beginning of the season, everyone wants to make the world win the World Series. Only one team can make it. Only one guy is going to get the MVP. And legacies are built with this World Series. Who's going to get the MVP? Who's going to win? And whoever does get that, whether it's Soto or Stanton or a judge or if Freeman plays or Otani, it's going to create another level of uh, demand for those players. Well, as I said, if there is a God, we're praying (laughs) that he's a Dodger. (laughs) And before you go, Rico, Jim Gosker wanted me to say hello to you. Jim, I got to give him a call. Yeah, great guy. He was a heck of a ball player. Yeah. He actually... Well, yeah. that's on Facebook. We got to talking. So. We did yeah. a. Uh, yeah, you, this is no, you weren't there. This is before you and I. This was way back. Hmm. Uh, Ellen and I did a, a book signing in Wilmington, and it was Ellen and I, Frank Malzone, mm-hmm. and Jimmy Gosker. Jim, yeah. And we sat there for four hours. They had me. His Malzone was hysterical. Yeah, oh, yeah. He had us laughing, but Jimmy Gosker, really Jimmy's, nice guy. Oh, yeah. And I spoke to Jimmy not too long ago. Uh, actually, we texted. He is going to be coming on the show, uh, Scott. So we'll bring you in uh, when he's on. Very cool. With that yeah. being said, Scotty, when does it end? <clears throat> Excuse me. When does the auction end? Monday, the 27th. So get your bids in quick. <laughs> and Charlie, as always, man, JRI, J-R-I cards. You, 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 nights you're, a week, six o'clock, four to six hours every night. Oh, I'm exhausted in the morning, but it's fun. It's never. It's always great. great. Charlie, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be doing a show uh, in Florida. Uh, we're going to be doing, a, 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 I'll be doing a broadcast from uh, uh, Heritage Auctions in Palm Beach. They opened oh, yeah, up, Palm Beach. yeah, they opened up uh, an office in Palm Beach. I'm going to ask you to join us, uh, join me. Absolutely, it'd be yeah, great. You know, Rico will be on the West Coast, so uh, he'll be Zooming in, but you can be with me. We'll have some fun. Just bring a pizza. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, thank you guys. You guys, thanks uh, thank a you lot. to Jimmy and Brian. Yeah, uh, good guys. Good show. The Long uh, Island nice. show. Don't forget the national. Yeah. Mr. Petroselli. Yes. Have a great week. Uh, yeah. See you in a couple of weeks. Mr. Hall of Famer Rico Petroselli. Have a great week. And the award-winning uh, Mr. Tom Zampler. Thank you. <laughs> thanks a lot. With thank that being said, it's warm down here, Rico. Ooh, I'm down. ready. Warm. <laughs> Happy collecting. <laughs> The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.